when you acknowledge the areas where he does create safety, you create safety in him. There's this stupid idea that men don't have hearts and don't feel a lot. Men feel a lot. Blessings and blessings, beautiful souls. My name is Preston Smiles, and I help people live their most abundant lives now. And today's transmission, today's conversation is about masculine and feminine polarity. But specifically, I am pointing the lens at men, at myself, for being on the hook for learning how to create safety. Now, before we go into me sort of bitch slapping men in the most loving way, um, I want to point out something to all the female listeners here. And that is, we hear you. Oftentimes what I hear women say directly and sometimes indirectly is, I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe. And what a man hears in that is he's still not doing good enough. Nothing I do counts. I'm uh, a failure. Um, And he starts to doubt himself, the relationship, and then at some point you. When you acknowledge the areas where he does create safety, you create safety in him. There's this stupid idea that men don't have hearts and don't feel a lot. Men feel a lot. We have just been taught to contain those feelings so much that by the time we're six years old, big boys don't cry is tattooed in our consciousness. Never believe a man who says he, he, he's good. He's not good. He's saying he's good because he's been taught by well-meaning mothers and weak, flabby fathers to be good, to be a good boy, to show up for you and do the dishes and the chores and the this and the that. And he's hoping that if he does all those things, you will pat him on the head and say, good job. I almost ruined my marriage because of this pattern. I could not see how the script that I had been living from was doing the opposite of creating safety. I thought if I just did more, if I stayed up later with the kids and held the finances and the kids and everything that she would give me some, you know, (laughs) award for the greatest husband and father, and then I could rest. Now, None of that had to do with her and everything to do with how I was raised. Because my mom had to make up for many people very early in her life. And then she met my amazing flamboyant father who was not very good at finances and never was taught how to be a man. So he thought that, you know, slanging dick and did drugs sometimes and just cheating and lying in many ways uh, was what men did. He was a child of the sixties. And so my mom loving me and my sister so much, she, she sort of took up the slack, but in doing so I made up a story at 13 that I now had to be the man in the house. And um, what that meant was uh, I could not add extra stress or pressure to her or her life. And what that meant is, for instance, if my friends and I went to go jump off of a fence, they would just jump off of the fence. I would think to myself, well, if I jump off and break my leg, then that's going to add more stress to my mom. So I had to be extra calculated about the masculine expression that needed to come out. Some of my friends didn't have that extra thought in their mind. They just did and, and, and were. And some of them paid the price for that. You know, it was a gift in many ways that I, I had that level of calculation that early. And it also robbed me of a childhood. 
And that's not just okay, it's, it's perfect. I accept that. But I want, what I want you to hear is that there are many men who have been in this similar position. And for me, I was trying my hardest to get Alexi's approval the same way that I did as a child. And the more and more I tried to get her approval, the more and more she felt unsafe. She could not feel me. There was a level of masculine thump that was there in other areas. She could see it in the workshop. She could see it in how I handled money and the, and the house and the business. But when it came to holding her heart, holding her feminine storms, and our dynamic and me not being willing to ask for what I want, for what I need. It wasn't helpful. Let's just say it that. Now she has all her own stuff and her own work in what we created. But for the purposes of this conversation, I had to learn and I am learning how to not collapse when her feminine storms come up. Trust and safety go hand in hand. And all of us were raised in a feminist movement where there has been a rail against the masculine, right? We'll show these men. And some of that has been extremely unhealthy. I've coached thousands of women who heard from their mothers and saw Never trust a man. Never depend on a man. All men are dogs. All men are stupid. All they want is sex from you. That type of programming over and over and over again at some point starts to land in your consciousness. And then you get in a relationship with a man and you don't trust him. You don't give him your heart. You give him pieces of your heart, parts of your heart. And he has to work for the rest. And even when he works for it, he still won't get it because of the programming. Now, he was programmed with the same stuff. So you have millions of nice guys who are addicted to porn, who are addicted to pills, who are addicted to stuff because they don't know where to go to feel. So fellas, that's your work. Your work is to contain, to hold. I have this new mantra that I've been using for about a year now, where every time something comes up in our relationship, I tell myself, don't listen. Don't listen to the words, attune to the being. Listen to her heart. Because with my kids, yes, I semi listen, but I'm really just seeing, does this child need a hug? Does this baby need appreciation? Do we need to have more daddy-daughter dates? What is, what's really happening? And oftentimes, we can't get to that if we're meeting them in the storm. You must be the container, the sky. Allow the weather to do the weather stuff while you hold. You are the sky. You are the galaxy. You are the universe. You hold the tornadoes. You hold the summer breeze. You hold it all. And we cannot be excited for the feminine beauty and not be excited for the feminine storm. So my invitation to all of us is to take it, our stuff, take our stuff to the council. Take our stuff to our men. Yes, you let her in on your inner world, but you don't dump it on her. You work out what's going on inside of you and you give that, you, you, you give her parts of it. You let her understand your vulnerabilities and things of that nature, but not to the point where she now has to hold the masculine pole. It's a bigger conversation. So we'll just call this part one. Blessings and blessings. If this sparked anything in you. I ask only one thing, and that is for you to share it with someone else. 
These are the type of messages and things that many men and women never got. And we need to hear these things from each other. I appreciate and love each and every one of you. If you are new to the family, new to the vibe, new to the tribe, and you are not a part of my mailing list, please uh, click the link right here below um, and uh, drop your email inside of PrestonSmiles.com. Uh, we got some pretty epic stuff coming up. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. I love you. I appreciate you. Have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day. We are works in progress. Oh, oh, raw!